Got some old carrots here. What can I do with them? Let's make some carrot fritter. No even whiskey, no milk, no eggs are necessary for them. Otherwise, it'd be like a pancake. So the first thing I'm gonna do is wash my carrots. Wash, 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 wash. I, got, I have a big family, so I have to make things stretch as far as I can. Okay, now we're going to break them up and just peel them. That's not mine. We're gonna cut the tops off. Sink is very multi purpose if you're like in a hurry, you're a stay at home mom, we're not. You just need to speed things up, use your sink for your compost. Um, now I'm going to bring them or peel them for <laughs> peel the outer skin. Okay. Make them all cleaned up. This is the part that you never see on uh, food channels and things like that because it takes time. And you know, I'm just gonna assume that not everybody has cleaned carrots before, it's a little bit laborsome, but if you have the right tools, you can do it. Now, I'm using a very old peeler that has basically been passed down to my grandfather. I mean, seriously, I've had this thing for years and years and years. My mom used it when I was a kid, and we used to have two, lost the other one. Things tend to get lost when you have children. <laughs> um, I have three kids, just to give you a little story time here. I have three kids, one is six, one is eight, and one is about to turn ten on December 26th. They are busy, especially my boys. Very busy. So when they're preoccupied this afternoon, I'm, I am making dinner. I usually don't take this much time to make dinner because I'm always looking to make something quick and easy. I always have a, a little bit of leftover here, a little bit of leftover there to stand out a little bit more, like a ricotta. You've seen how I can make ricottas. But today I have to make something new because basically my refrigerator is kind of bare. So wash them again. Okay. Now just let me just clean up here too little get all the carrot leavings kind of... I, I have compost. Like I don't really throw all this in the garbage can because our garbage would be full, full, full. I eat a lot of vegetables. Vegetables you can make into so many things and stretch the food out more. If I would just eat, like, I, I mean, I'm not a vegan, but I'm partial vegan. <laughs> like, I like chicken, I like fish, but I don't eat a lot of beef. I eat a lot of ground turkey. But I do the compost outside, so I like to put all my stuff in compost and not the garbage can. Okay, now I'm going to go cut my board. Cut my board. And I'm going to just chop this up real fine. Um, oh, my sister gave me this for my birthday. And it's like a real like a handheld chopper, you don't have to plug it in or anything. Put it in, you go like this, and it chops it right away. So all I have to do is just chop things up. Look at kind of bite-sized pieces. I'm gonna put it in there. <clears throat> I taught myself how to cook things by watching a zillion food channel things. Always like to cook. So I have not, I have not been to like a professional culinary school or nothing like that. I actually was a teacher for 10 years. Now I find that in my spare time, I like to showcase what I could cook when you have family. And you're looking for easy things to put together. Especially when, you know, you can't really go out as much anymore with this COVID-19 business and being safe and all that. So, I'm always looking for innovative ways. Get my arm muscles going. Hmm. This is going to be a little too hard. This is one of the things that you face as a, as a, uh, as a mom. You try things, it's a little more important. So, plan B. The carrots are a little too hard for this little thing. Thank God for appliances, my goodness. I was back in the pioneer days, I don't know what I'd do. Okay, so, there's my food processor. I'm gonna put them in here. Let me just rinse this out real quick. You know, sometimes the things sit around, they kind of, you don't want things to gather dust, but I'm just gonna go. put my carrots in there. There they go. And, put the rest of my carrots in there. I don't really have to find chocolate these too much, seriously. Put the rest of my carrots in there. Now I'm making a fritter, a carrot fritter. Basically it's carrots, um, like a half a cup of water, um, so like a cup of flour, and seasonings, and if you like, sometimes I like to put cheese in it, like grate some cheese and put it in there to add some extra flavor. But fritters are not like, uh, they're not like pancakes. And believe me, I'm saying that because sometimes like my fritters have turned out to be like pancakes <laughs> and that was not the intention. Um, they should be crunchy and soft inside. Okay, so I'm going to blend this up. There we go. And I don't wanna blend it until it's like pulp. I wanna blend it like it's finely chopped, almost shredded, but not like pulpy. Okay, this is good, this is what I wanna see. It kinda looks like, like that. So I'm going to pour that up to a bowl. Here we go. Here we go. I'll move everything to the side here. So here's my light on here. Let's see. Here's my carrots. Putting them in a bowl. Okay, I'll just scoop this off. I promise I'm not going to cut myself. <laughs> That's how the turning's going to be kitchen. Where if I'm rushing around, I'm like, oh gosh, I just cut myself. It's just bothering me. So, just stir this off. I don't, I don't like wasting food. If something is old, I'll try to clean it up and make something out of it. Now, it's, it's different if it's if it's spoiled, then that's another thing. I just compost it. But if it's just like 
you know, like a week old or something, like there's always something that you can make out of that stuff. So let me clear up my working space. You know, that's kind of an important thing. Like when you're cooking, you want to make sure you have enough space. I'm sorry, it's my teacher coming out with me. I'm sorry to teach you guys. Um, okay, so here's what it looks like. Now I'm gonna get some, um, I'm gonna get some flour. And um, I'm going to use um, cauliflower, I'm gonna get a cauliflower um, rice here as well, just to add again some extra depth and flavor. I will be using regular flour too, but it won't be like two cups of flour, it'll be like one cup of flour. Open. Right. Some people make their own cauliflower uh, rice, but I think that if I just. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, I'm gonna shred this up a little bit in here. I took this out of the freezer, so I don't have a little bit of thawing time with the carrots here. Then it'll add some extra water, actually, so I'm not going to be adding a whole lot of water to this because I already will have water coming off of my cauliflower. And, you know, you're free to make your own cauliflower rice. You just take cauliflower florets and put it. you can put it in a blender or a food processor and make your own. This is organic, so I try to get as many organic things as possible if I can't do it on my own, if I don't have the time to do it on my own. I like to say they're all having a party together, making friends, cauliflower rice and carrots. What a good combination. My hands right now are absolutely freezing though. <laughs> I'm like touching that cauliflower rice. Oh my goodness. Okay, so let me go get some flour. <laughs> I'm coming back, I promise. <laughs> Okay, here I am. Here's some flour. I'm gonna put a cup in there. And uh, just flour I use. It doesn't really matter. It's just all-purpose flour I use. Make sure when you put a cup of flour, it's not like heaping flour. It's leveled off. You don't want to put heaping because then you're measuring out more than a cup there. And this is a little bit of trial and error. Um, we'll see how it does with just what I added just now, the consistency wise. It's tempting to say oh, maybe I need an egg in there. Bring it all together. No, you just need a little bit of water. Just a little bit of. already starting to become like you see that it's starting to come together i put a little bit of water in there i don't think i need like any water really to be honest but it's uh it's good coming together there's one thing i forgot is that you always want to season your food now, i don't just season with salt and pepper i season with um uh you know you can make it taste spicy or italian flavor however you want whatever taste you want in there asian flavor you can use five spice i'm just going to use uh the coriander let's see we got a little chili powder garlic salt italian seasoning i'll show you my seasoning it's just Powder. So we got curry powder, granulated garlic, chili powder, and some Italian seasoning. I put in there like a lot in there because you know I want it to be flavorful, not just taste just like a carrot with no enhanced. This is like putting makeup on your food, basically. You enhance the flavor, otherwise it'd be kind of bland. I like bland food. Nope, I like garlic powder so good in there. Okay, so now we just bring it all together. It kind of looks like a meatloaf, doesn't it? <laughs> like a orange, orange meatloaf. <laughs> so it's coming together. You can see. <clears throat> So basically you have what you need here. I'm going to add a little bit of, um, maybe, no, maybe, yes, I think I will, I will. I'm gonna add a little bit of Parmesan cheese to this. Or not Parmesan cheese, but I have some Danish cheese that would taste, actually, okay, I'm thinking out loud here. I'm going to add um, feta cheese to it because I'm a little bit dairy, dairy intolerant. I can't have a lot of dairy in my diet. So goat cheese seems to actually be okay. Like I can handle goat cheese more than any other cheese. It's a little bit fat. When I have a high fat content, my diet is really hard to digest. So I had my gallbladder review last year and this is my new life. Um, so here, then I'm just crumbling it up. It actually will give it a very, um, kind of a bite to it. Really, really good. I'm adding about two, like two tablespoons in here. Okay, so I'm going to blend it up again. When I have it all blended, I'm going to put it on a pan with parchment paper. Bake it at, um, 375. And I can't really tell you how long, because you can kind of tell, you can tell when a fritter's done when it's lightly browned. And it feels, it feels like, um, it doesn't feel doughy to the touch. There's no doughy um, texture to it. Let me move my camera. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay, so now we have this. Okay, trying to get it on the camera. All right, so just a little bit. Sorry, you see my purple shirt. It's dirty. Put the flour. We put it on a pan now. Get some parchment paper. 
Aren't you guys excited to see what's gonna happen with these things? <laughs> I hope it turns out the way I think it will. Sometimes you know I have these ideas and they don't always turn out, but most of the time it comes out really good. So I just put a little bit of oil on there. And that's I'm making mint balls basically. We're not gonna make them that big. Actually, this one's too big. You can make them smaller than that so they all cook like in your palm. Just form a ball and putting three across. Three across like that. Now, if you're a vegan, this is a very good vegan recipe. There's no meat in it. It's just basically two vegetables. Um, and the only thing is that doesn't go cheese in it, so I guess it's not purely vegan. But kind of cheese is basically the only cheese I ever eat anyways. I used to eat so much cheese. I used to be cheeseaholic. Kind of miss those days, actually. But I, I've learned to change the way I cook and you know, what I use, and it's still healthy. You don't need cheese to live, even though I thought that I needed cheese way back when. I'm going to try and put the whole thing in there. So I'm going to make another row, another three rows. Okay, so I'm going to flatten that just a little bit because you don't want like big balls and it's like oh it's not cooking evenly sometimes when you have a ball in the oven it doesn't cook evenly so you want to just flatten it just a little bit more and i'm going to put three more and you know don't be afraid if it looks like oh my gosh they're growing together it's totally fine because you can separate that with a spoon you know and it still remains intact okay so i'm making just facing just a little bit like that okay they may grow together that's okay no stress i mean so this is my Instagram account. It's called Easy Cooking 56. Um, why I have the number in there? I don't know. It was just a random number I put in there, but Easy Cooking 56. And um, trying to make your life as easy as possible. This only took me like I don't know, like 20 minutes of preparation time. But it depends how long you um, take on the prep work too. How long you want to take on that? So I have a TikTok account too called uh, um, Kids or oh, Food Food TikTok Kids Style as well. So this will be on my TikTok account. And I also have Food 360 on my Facebook. Food 360 uh, Cooking with Scraps. Because that's kind of what I do. I find what I have. I remember something that my mom always told me. What do you have? What do you have? So you have to go find something at the store every day or every week. Look what you have. Try to make something out of it. So I've stuck to that philosophy. Now look at this. I'm, I'm barely gonna. <laughs> I'm barely gonna make it. I'm trying to put everything onto the pan. One thing I hate is washing dishes. <laughs> I hate washing more than like families worth of dishes. So I'm trying to fit it all. In. That's my inner reason for this. Why I'm trying to fit it all there. Okay. So here, we go like this. Okay. And when they're done, I'll bring them out and I'll show you what they look like. 